So, um, somehow we have arrived at the end of March, and I do not know what happened. I swear to you, it was the 21st yesterday, and I was looking at my calendar thinking I'd have so much time to edit, and here I am on the last day of the month without even a rough edit. So, uh, looking at the footage for this month's vlog, overall, it was rather self-indulgent. I have these mood swings with my different hobbies, like I imagine most other people do. So I've actually been writing a lot uh, recently, and that's been more of my creative outlet this month. Most of the visual art that I've been doing aligns with that mindset of writing. Um, so I've spent a lot of time sketching out characters and concepts for stories, and just indulging myself, doing random faces, taking the time to render them out in values rather than colors, which honestly I'd like to continue with in the coming months. So I'll start us off in my big sketchbook. I checked earlier today and I was genuinely so proud to realize how much of the sketchbook I've filled out in the past three months alone. So from 2020 to the end of last year, I finished 130 pages and I'm ending this month at page 269, which is wild to me. So that means in the past three months, I did more in the sketchbook than I did in the three years before then. And you know, to be fair to my past self, Prior to this year, I only really used this sketchbook for studies. For example, if I felt like doing a bunch of pose studies or hand studies, that's what I would do in this sketchbook. And I would keep a separate sketchbook for uh, con concepts, ideating, but uh, I currently don't have a separate sketchbook for that. All that said, like, I think I should just give myself credit because that's a lot of progress that I've made in the sketchbook. And that was one of my main goals for the year. So there wasn't actually a lot of focus in this month's sketch work, which honestly I'm fine with. I did a few studies from references of cis male, like masculine presenting torsos, which I struggle to draw because in real life, there's a lot more curve to the pectorals than you might think when you're drawing it. So there's this kind of balance I'm trying to find between shaping them out so it looks at least a little bit realistic, but doing that without them looking too feminine presenting. I'd like to continue working on my torsos though because I really don't feel confident in that work that I do. There's also some conceptual stuff here and there in the sketchbook, stuff for my stories, like these like maps and layouts that I was working on. There's lots of random poses and body parts, and just concepts. And then some little pencil renderings. Um, you might see these little orange tabs in the sketchbook, and that's where I've marked off ideas that I would actually like to return to and do a f further iteration on. Yeah, there's a couple sketches that are studies from real life, which is what I hope to carry into April, but other than that, there's some objects, some lines, and just random things. Moving on to painting stuff, uh, on the 9th, I realized that I hadn't done any painting at all, so I set out to just fill a spread with color and negative painting. I planned on it being more of a pale yellow to like teal blue, but it ended up as almost a spring green color, which I don't mind, like this is not normally a color I gravitate towards, but I like how it turned out. Next, I had actually been testing out the flat water brush I grabbed at the end of last month. The shape is a little bit weird. It's, there's, I'm not sure if it's straight uh, bristles or just rounded out a bit more or if it's like supposed to be like that, but it's not the, the sharp flat shape that I expected. So I'm wondering if I might be able to give it like a little haircut or something. I also, uh, those map sketches I did, I wanted to do a larger painted map, so I threw some gouache on just some random old paper that I have. It didn't go super well, so I'd like to return to that maybe in graphite or watercolors, but I took the leftover gouache because I didn't want to waste it, and I did these random eye doodles. And yeah, that's literally all that I did in my watercolor sketchbook this month. Moving on, I tested out this Winsor Newton 25% cotton paper that I grabbed early in the month. Uh, I did these two studies that I've been repeatedly doing over the past three months, uh, just for the sake of memorization. So the first one is using the Daniel Smith confetti dot cards that I honestly forgot that I had. I looked at them at the end of last month and I'm like, huh, anthraconoid red. I've been wanting to buy that. And here I have this slightly larger dot at swatch of it. So I can use that and I won't have to buy a new tube, but I will also satiate my desire to buy use new colors. On this paper, it seemed to dry a bit faster than I'm used to. I, I do like how it turned out, but I'd like to do some more testing. Um, I'm especially trying to find like a decent quality uh, paint, sorry, uh, watercolor paper to use with more student grade paints. 
just because I'm, I'm just interested to see what's out there, what I could use, what I wish I had used when I first started. Uh, so then the second one that I did here was using my old student grade paints, which was honestly so fun to go back to. Um, normally I only work with limited palettes because I get overwhelmed with lots of colors. So it was really fun to go back to my student grade paints because I've got 24 of them. So I just went, I went hog wild. I was slapping colors together. It was, I was layering things that I would never have done. One thing to note is that uh, Van Gogh paints, I believe they have honey in them, so on any, like, cheaper quality paper, and also, honestly, on, um, like, higher quality papers, I assume, they reactivate quite easily, so some of these darker layers did reactivate, and it was a little bit disorienting to use because my higher grade paints don't do that, and I haven't used the student grade paints in a while. Yeah, but it was interesting. I'd like to do some more investigations on different papers and how they function with different paints. Next up is this little painting of Echo. I did the original sketch in my big sketchbook last month, then I reworked it a little bit. I was just kind of... Also, I was testing out the uh, this Blackwing pencil. I don't know which... Um, I don't know what like hardness it is, but I really like how like rich and dark it gets. I haven't had a chance to play with it since then, but I will definitely be returning to that next month. So I revised the sketch and I started transferring it over to um, kind of the, I took the last sheet of my Archer's hot press paper and I cut it in half. So this is the second last sheet that I have of it right now, other than what's actually in the mini sketchbook that I made last month. For like the actual painting, I used the Opus paints and I just kind of let myself have some fun. I didn't plan out a super specific palette, um, but you know, the character has like blonde slash light brown hair and I wanted the shirt to be white. So I kind of just, that that's really all that guided me in terms of colors. And then towards the end, I started putting in these like circuit board looking lines in the background In I did those in acrylic ink so that I'd be able to layer the watercolor over it without having to redo it all the time. Um, and then at the very end, I finished everything off with a little bit of gel pen. Um, I really love how it turned out, honestly. I have forgotten how much I love painting on hot press paper. It does dry quicker than cold press paper, but I really like getting those like sharp, clean details. It's just really satisfying. Towards the end of the month, I had to force myself to do at least a little bit of something on the Ezra painting. The reason I'd been dragging my feet so much is because I was at like just a hard step in the painting progress. What I really wanted to do was put in the dark details on his hair and the jacket, but I didn't know whether the paint spray that I was using would reactivate when I layered on top of it later. So it like if I layered upon it later, right? What I knew I actually needed to do next was block in the deeper reds and blues. And then, you know, later I would, would go back and add the darker parts on top. It's not super visible in here, but I had already done a lighter wash of blue and red and I wanted it a lot deeper. So I was scared. I didn't want to mess it up. I, it, it just had to be done though. I really don't mind how it turned out. I don't know that I love it 100%, but I don't think I made any major mistakes that I won't be able to correct. I decided I mixed up my red and my blues. I mixed up a lot of it so that I would not run out um, because that is a mistake I've made many a time. And then I decided last, last minute that it'd be good to do the step using wet on wet, which was definitely the right call because it gave me a lot more leeway in terms of drying time. and I was able to better move the paint into the right areas or lift paint and adjust. Um, I had also been planning then to do, because I had covered the whole page in a wet and wet, like a clear water wash to do wet and wet. I had been planning to do the red and the blue at the same time. And I decided right then that I didn't want to risk them mixing. Um, because my end goal is for it to have this stark contrast between red and blue, and I don't actually want to have a lot of purple in the painting. It's meant to be red, blue, and like black. Those are the main colors in the painting. Then the last little thing I did this month was just in the vein of wanting to delve into value studies and graphite work. I found these little like cardboard thingamajigs, and I was thinking I could turn them into trading cards or bookmarks or whatever. So I slapped some acrylic gouache on it just to kind of play around and see if it would 
work in any way whatsoever. It was pretty fun. Um, I haven't done a lot of work with acrylic gouache and I'm interested in doing more because, you know, sometimes regular gouache can be a little tricky because it does reactivate. I still haven't kind of mastered the um, getting the consistency of regular uh, gouache correct all the time. Um, but yeah, it was fun. And what I realized when I did this is that every struggle that I've had with acrylic gouache is because of my uh, color selection. Because I'm so used to watercolors and gouache, normally what I do when I'm interested in trying a different medium is I pick out a couple select colors that I'm interested in. And because I assumed that acrylic gouache would work in a similar vein to regular gouache, I picked up a handful of colors that I thought would be interesting. And they are pretty, I like them on their own, but they don't lend themselves to mixing very well. Specifically, like, I have this, like, light yellow color, and I'm assuming there's a white pigment in there, so it mixes in a little bit of an odd way. So I really think that I need to get some better convenience colors, or just expand my color palette there um, in some way. Especially because with acrylic gouache, it, it dries quickly, and it won't get reactivated, right? So it's not like I can waste a lot of time mixing colors and getting the exact right shade so convenience colors are would definitely be the way to go I think so yeah that's kind of it for this month not the most productive in I, I would say but you know it's good nonetheless for me to reflect on what I did and I what I didn't do moving into April I'd like to do a couple studies in pencil or grayscale mediums specifically I think I want to work on rendering skulls um or faces. Uh, I'm trying to like build up the courage to do life studies or still lifes as well but like other than that perhaps just some like object or environment studies. I just want to get my creativity going again. I want to do like conceptual art, characters and environments, storytelling. I'm really like it feels like I'm inching towards that overall goal of mine and I'm really excited for it. I want to play around with flat brushes and different mediums like more gouache and acrylic gouache and get creative, do some original work. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Also digital art. Um, I don't know why I'm, I can't get myself back into doing it. I think part of it is because I spend way too much time looking at a screen anyway. So the idea of sitting down and looking at a screen to do art is um, not very appealing. But I also think it's this like lack of tangibility if that's a word because you know it's so much easier to ignore a file on your computer as opposed to ignoring a blank piece of paper that's you know calling your name in an angelic voice it's just lying on your desk and it's so tempting you know uh, <laughs> this is quite the tangent so I might as well continue um, I'm gonna end off with some like bookkeeping notes I really want to focus up and improve my audio production <laughs> Oh, look at me so fancy audio production I'm literally talking into my cell phone mic without any like external mic just talking into my cell phone right now I should invest in a uh, in like a proper microphone I'd also like to find like a permanent solution for filming overhead shots uh yeah I should I should just invest in a tripod but like those things are expensive okay <laughs> that was quite the tangent and now my voice is tired so I'm gonna end right here um yeah, I'm excited for next month. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.